I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> I will show you. Today at our business meeting, we talked about plans for our upcoming retreat. We talked about Cammy getting our tax gear in order. Tax gear? I don't even know what to call it. <laughs> Just our tax information to the right place. <laughs> that. And we were going to write or edit the back of our book for the AT, but I guess I just got delegated that. And I got delegated taxes, so I don't know. We might have gotten a better deal. Have we told you guys that we have an updated title for our book? I don't think so. Well, let me pull it up. You might be interested in this. <clears throat> After a lot of back and forth, we got this suggestion from our publishing group, and this is the title, 2,000 Miles Together, Rediscovering Our Family on the Appalachian Trail. What do you think? All my lead feedback, that's going to be positive. We're not changing it. <laughs> yeah. This is actual like title lock, so there's no going back. It's simple, it's true. People tell us it's it, catchy, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, the 2000, I guess, catches people. I don't know. What I got for my birthday, I got this like coloring case like this has like markers in it and it came with a coloring book and I have these coloring books and the other one's right here it's like an animal house marker set right here and I got this candle from Aunt Hannah brand box it has all the colors in it. And this is a stamp thing. I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> I will show you. Let's go. Okay, I accidentally got into the front seat. Whoops. You're supposed to get in the front seat. <laughs> I know, trial by fire. This place isn't that bad. I'll make sure that you don't die or kill anyone else um yeah put that over all right you successfully turned on the car good job okay go put, put put the gas pedal on a little bit more there you go okay all right just don't run into these cars yep so this is our first stop sign okay so i want you to stop no Whoa. no no <laughs> not that hard go 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 eden go go up to the stop sign go up Put your right blinker on. Stop. Right blinker on. Okay. Now go. Go right. Go right. Yes, you can. So, how did? How was that for you? Was that all you thought it would be? <laughs> no, I. It was. It was more fun than I thought it would be. Oh. I mean, it was like also like kind of like scary, but it was yeah. More fun than I it would be. You I think you did a good job. On Sunday, two days ago, I posted this picture on Instagram of us naked from our trip to a nudist resort about three weeks ago. The reason why I posted it on Sunday was because I had been putting it off for a long time because I knew the backlash that we would get. And I was anticipating that we would lose 100 followers. Uh, we only lost 66. The reason why I posted it 
as opposed to not posting it at all because one of our goals for this channel and our social media is to tell our story honestly and accurately and humbly, which means honestly. So instead of projecting who we want to be or who we think we should be or who we think you want us to be, we try and tell a story of what actually is by what happened. And this is one of the things that happened to us. So therefore, by not posting it, I feel like it would be dishonest or present an inaccurate picture of who we are, which I don't think is fair. If you're watching some of our things, whether it be our hiking or our child raising or our finances, and we don't give you an accurate picture of what it takes to get there. Now, just a quick side note, I don't think that means we need to post every single little thing, like when we go poop and pee, but I do think it crosses a line for me when there's something that's a big deal to us and we are like either deceptive by a mission or deception about it. And this is a thing that is a big deal to us and it governs a lot of our beliefs right now. And it's really transformed a lot of who we are today. Hi. Um, okay. I don't want to watch the movie. Okay, you don't have to watch it, but uh, we're a little... So I want to read the caption that we wrote for the original post and then some of the comments and we're going to respond to those. So the original caption said, being raised in purity culture, we believed our bodies belonged solely to each other and anyone else seeing you was shameful and robbing you of dignity and purity. Sexual thoughts were protected under lock and key because that was cheating. Well, we've come a little ways and one of the valuable tools for us has been nudity and accepting of our bodies as just bodies. We've come to see that we were hiding behind words like purity and modesty because we were afraid of the conversations and judgments that could be had on the other side. While we may have lost some purity, we're both so much more grateful for what we've gained to walk this world with less judgment and shame of ourselves and others and exchange it for more love and freedom. This first comment comes from Nicole and she says, I always sort of cringe at attestations or epiphanies that claim with certainty, quote, I figured out you are this and I am this or that your epiphany makes all other forms of walking through life wrong and lesser than yours. It is a misnomer to think that everyone only gets sexual freedom through nudity. A man or woman may feel just as much freedom in saying that their body does not belong to anyone else but themselves. Victims of sexual assault feel freedom by taking that power back. In addition, just because I do not teach my daughters to be nude in a nudist resort or to have sex out of monogamy, it is wrong to assume I am teaching them to feel shame around sex or their nudity. Why is freedom only synonymous with what you say it is? I'm echoing the strength and pride my mother taught to me. I love my body and have never felt shame. I just don't express it the way you do. Your experience is yours and I respect your growth, but I don't like how you project that outward as though those who don't embrace that are somehow less free or ashamed. In fact, that experience that you depict above would make me feel like I was in a prison of sexualization and less free. Hmm. When I first read this, I was like pissed, but now that I'm reading this, I'm able to see more her side. Um, especially, I feel like uh, she's still very much in the culture that we came from. <laughs> um, that could be wrong, but that's just the sense I get. So I, I think that some people watching this might be like, why are you guys fielding all these comments? But for me, the culture that we came from, I have a really, really soft spot for the religious folks out Softer there. Softer than me, I think, which is ironic because probably most of you think well, he's the hard ass. I know what it's always. like. I mean, I can't, I don't <laughs> know, share all the same story as all these people, but I used so many of these arguments and came from a lot, I can, I can resonate with a lot of these perspectives. So that's why if you don't come from a religious world, you might just want to skip this video because a lot of the comments have to do with that. Unless you want to understand religious I, folk. I think that's important because <laughs> a lot of times people are just like, they're a bunch of idiots. And I actually don't think that's true. 
Um, it's a very forming culture. If you are raised in this, it's like really hard, I think, to um, break out of certain ways of seeing the world. So this comment is a little bit ironic to me because she is saying that we are saying that um, people need to do a certain thing to feel freedom, which not only did we not say at all in this post, like this post says how we were raised, what we've done, and how it's helped us. And the language that I've used is very, very particular and very careful um, to talk about in those that type of language. And besides that, we don't believe that. Like, mm -hmm. never once have we said that everyone should go and do nudity. Now, I think for some people, it might be good. Um, and regardless if people do it, I think some people are hiding behind excuses. But, it doesn't matter what side of the culture you're on for that. Right, but it's not our job or responsibility or right to tell people what they need to do. In fact, that kind of way of living life, we actually were hurt by in the last 20 years, and we've hurt other people by thinking that there's only one way to live, and if you don't live that way, something's wrong with you. And so... And I'm, yeah. I'm very familiar with a story that says nudity is wrong and dangerous and bad. In fact, the whole first part of our post says that. So to hear more people say that, I feel like enough people are saying that in this world, um, at least yeah. in our world. Um, so I guess the one thing I have with this comment is it says, uh, your, your experience is yours and I respect your growth, but I don't like how you project that outward. Well, we're, we're sharing our story. We're sharing our growth, and our personal growth. By what you say, I appreciate that you say that you respect it, but your post, the way that it's phrased relative to our post, it actually doesn't show me that you respect it. It shows me that you're not listening to what we're saying, and you would rather just say your message, which I think your message is fine and valid, it just doesn't make for a very good conversation if that's all you're going to keep on saying and if you're not going to listen to our story. Mm -hmm. Because some people might, the whole reason why we share our story is in the hope that those people that it will help, it will help. And if it doesn't help, I hope people either stop watching so they don't keep on getting repeatedly offended. Um, or if they're open to the conversation, then maybe it'll help them. Not because we feel like we're role models, but just because it makes for interesting conversation. Okay, Julie comments, what biblical ground do you draw from to justify this new belief? Do you or do you not believe God's word is our authority? I love this question because I think it's like really honest. This used to be the question I used to have to ask for everything. But the short answer is this. We don't feel like we have to justify this new belief. In the same way, I don't feel like you have to justify going grocery shopping or going swimming or going walking. I mean, we're talking about not wearing clothes here. So while it is culturally unique, it's actually a very, very natural thing. So natural, every single person is born that way. But you're justifying it right now. Dang it. <laughs> Wait, what? Well, you're saying it's natural or you're trying, I don't know. I think you are, but. I'm explaining I, why I don't feel like I have to justify yeah. it. I mean, I'm stating facts. I think there's a lot of facts about it, but. Well, I think there's this bigger <clears throat> worldview that we're coming from now, which is things aren't so black and white, right and wrong to us. And we don't feel like there's this like scary God judge up there judging every move we make. And you better make sure you follow everything in this book that people say God wrote through humans in order not to get judged. A lot of things just that we used to believe we don't anymore. We don't hold as, as crazy, crazy high, highly important. Important. There's so much that is just like, okay to do. Like I used to approach things from the perspective of like, I felt like I had to justify everything. If I'm buying something, I'd be like, oh, I'm buying this because it's to make God happy. Or if I was like eating expensive food, it'd be like, oh, this is to show love to my neighbor. And what I found was that one, I think it was a lot of self-deception. Like whenever you're like caught in this mode of having to justify everything, 
basically you're gonna do what you're gonna do and you're gonna come up with a biblical reason to back it up, which is actually kind of dangerous. And two, <clears throat> I just don't think it's like what the Bible requires. So going into the second part, do you or do you not believe God's word is our authority? Even that question is so black and white, um, which I totally get because I've come from that type of thinking. But I don't know. It's like I, I think there's like good ways to live your life, but I just don't see it anymore as this like... <clears throat> boom, like this is the authority and you better live this way because if you don't, you're gonna have a horrible life and God, you're gonna go to hell and yada yada. All this like fear that's around around that, like I- Well, I've my personal perspective is that the that. Bible doesn't claim to be the ultimate authority of all of life and answer all of questions. I mean, it claims to be an inspired text um, that has unique like spiritual origins and for that reason, I think it's really special, but I don't think it was ever meant to be used to justify every action. Mark comments, in the beginning, God clothed man and woman after they had sinned. If you were still in the garden prior to that, or at some point in the world to come, then it may be different. But right now, you are simply acting out of your sin nature and looking for shock value. Thanks for being so damn confident about us, Mark. You want to get naked and lay in the sun? Do it in your backyard in private. Publishing on Facebook and saying, hey, look at me, is shameful, seriously. I would challenge you to show me a biblical perspective that would make this seem, capital G, godly. I really enjoy following you and your family through all the hikes you've done. Oh, thank you. But if this is what's acceptable in your eyes, or even worse, if you're teaching your children this is just fine, then I'm gonna have to be done with you. In my experience, this is one of the most harmful things that <laughs> Christians I just need to, like, shake it up. <laughs> can do. Um, and not even not not even it doesn't matter if you're Christian or not, but I see Christians do it a lot, and I think I did it a lot under that guise, which is read into someone else's motives. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a friend that's like in that camp and she she just went ape shit about how the bit one of the biggest sins and only sins um, well I'm not gonna get too far into it but is judging someone else's heart and how strict Jesus was about doing that and this is he's totally doing that I mean he's saying that we're doing it to get attention we're doing it to shock people and I would just say you don't know that. Um, in fact, you're totally wrong about that. Um, and even if we were, so what? <laughs> um, so that's, I don't know, that's not really helpful conversation for me. And I, I don't think that's gonna go very well with other people if I go around and I assume why people are doing things, especially people that I've never met before. Um, and I don't really accept your challenge to show you a biblical perspective because I just don't care. I'm gonna tell you you're a little fired up about this. <laughs> um, and yes, this is acceptable in our eyes and worse, and we are teaching our children. So if you are done with us, we are uh, sad that you're making that choice. Like we wish people could stay around, but we totally respect that our brand or lifestyle is not helpful to everyone right now. And I think it's really good for us to, to be okay with that and to say, you know what, you can go. And if you ever wanna come back, our channel is here. Um, we try not to take it personally. I try not to take it personally. Um, and... I might for a moment, and then I like try to shake it off. <laughs> I'm probably just trying to like make myself look better right now, which who really gives a f But like, I haven't even read most of these comments, but Ben has. I don't even have any like preparation. Oh, because so these are is, all from Facebook. This is like me getting it for the first time. Okay. Whatever. Anyways, so, even if it wasn't, who cares? They but, want it uncensored and unfiltered, I well, think. Well, I think you're getting it. They don't like nudity, more. but they, they don't mind swear words. Um, God <laughs> gave us a conscience. If you this ignore your conscience long enough and tell yourself it's okay long enough and find others to agree with you long enough, your conscience will certainly go away and Christ will go too. Hmm, another confident <clears throat> person. So those all sound like okay, but that's not in the Bible. So I don't know where you get that from. 
And those are some bold statements. I don't really think Christ, in my personal opinion, is conditional. So I don't think Christ is going anywhere. That's what's like so weird, a little weird to me is like, we're not telling people to go and be nudists. We're not posting pictures of your actual tits. I mean, we're just saying that we did something that is, yeah. is different, is different for our and culture. And people are not even okay with that. You know, we're not pushing this on you. <laughs> um, so this, this is what's a little bit depressing to me about this belief system. It's one thing if someone is saying, I'm choosing not to live this way because I think God doesn't want me to, great. But then when you go out of your way to try and oppress and marginalize others. And say, you have to hide this part of your life. That's don't, like, don't that, let us see it. I can tell that these people that, I mean, I think what comes from that is when you feel so threatened and you're so insecure in your belief, you have to try and shut the belief down in other people. And that, I, I think it might be worth looking at which we can like, relate to that because that absolutely. was most of our life was trying to like defend Jesus. But that shows how Bible. weak the belief is. Because if, if God is really that badass and strong, he doesn't, and the truth is really that shining and eternal, it doesn't need your defense. You know, it just is. So I think these people, they're defending something else. I think they're actually defending themselves. You know, and I, they're defending a religion, which maybe that doesn't make sense. Well, if the religion is that strong, it doesn't need to defend it either. So, <clears throat> I, I don't know. I'm actually saying this because I'm trying to be helpful because this is what I spotted in myself. If if you are find your, find yourself defending this idea, just know if it's really that true and strong. I think there's bigger and stronger beliefs out there, which I think actually the Bible and God are a part of. So I don't think we're talking about. It's not like we don't believe in the Bible or God, but this right here, it's not, you know? This comment is from Helen. Good for you. Nudity, sexuality, and sensuality are not the same thing. In many tribal cultures, nudity is a normal and everyday thing. In our culture, we place a superficial and arbitrary censorship on our bodies when to be naked is to be sexual. Young children run around naked without sexual connotations, and it is perfectly possible to be with other naked adults without sexual or lustful thoughts, which are in the mind, not the body. Your journey is an interesting one. We had a lot, a lot, a lot of positive comments um, from this, way more than I thought. And the, the post actually ended up getting 458 likes so far, which is, it's cool to me that there's friends of ours and people that will like something like this as a way to support the message behind it, even though I know it can be kind of weird liking something with nudity just because how it's construed in our culture. And people would be like, oh, you're, you're a sicko or you're mm -hmm. a perverted. Yeah. I know we run that risk. So thank you for those of you guys that do, uh, did choose to express your support yeah. um, because you support either us or this message. Okay, <clears throat> Eileen comments, well, mostly we protect our bodies under clothing because it just makes sense. As well as, for Christians, Jesus said to look at a woman with lust is adultery. He was giving us a picture of the absolute holiness of God, that what we think doesn't matter. It's what God says that does. So, out of love for others, we don't want to be tempting anyone into lusting after another. Besides, personally for me, nobody, and I mean no one, wants to see what I've got under mine. Thank you very much. This was a nice negative comment. <laughs> I would put it that way because it's like negative, but it's like, I don't know, she's not being a dick, which is nice. There's this whole like issue with Bible interpretation where people are very convenient to take Jesus' words, which are not literal um, most of the time, and, and use them contextual. and use them for their own purposes. And I don't think we do that on purpose, but we have to be really careful when that's done. And this is obviously not a literal statement when Jesus says to look at a woman is the same as adultery. I mean, this is the same passage, I believe, where he says, pluck your eye out. And I've never seen a Christian pluck their eye out. So it must not be a literal thing, which all that to say, you know, I think it's still important, but we need to look at what he meant and how to apply it to our life and not just 
use it how it's convenient. Now, the last part where she says nobody, and I mean nobody wants to see what I've got in her mind, thank you very much. I'm assuming she's joking, but I just, I'm gonna take this at face value. Um, I'm very fine if there's people out there um, for religious or any reason don't wanna be naked or nude or um, for that matter, anything that we are doing on our channel. You know, like it's you guys' lives, you do whatever the heck you want. Um, we're not gonna judge you for it. But what I think is destructive is when we don't own those decisions and we say that we're doing them for other people. <clears throat> and we were raised in environments where it wasn't okay just to say, I don't wanna do that. I'm scared, I'm not comfortable. So there is all sorts of reasons made up, a lot of times under the guise of modesty or purity. Or God says, um, using God, I think is was the most destructive because you're, you're like, oh, God created me and you're saying God's telling me this? Or out of Dang. deference, for out of love, when really it was just that you don't wanna do this. So I'll take, for example, this, these statements you're making at the end, I know that's not true because one of the cool things about nudist resorts is that it's not sexualized um, predominantly and therefore if you're overweight or like culturally unattractive, that's one of the great things about it is that people are extremely non-judgmental and very accepting for all ages and body types. And like I said, that's the coolest thing about it. So when you're saying, well, you don't want to see me, how do you know? Like. <laughs> Um, that's the cool thing about being there is like everyone wants to see everybody not because they're like oh I'm getting aroused mm -hmm. and you fit my stereotype of a sexy person But because it's like th there's this game where it's like hey, let's t shed these uh, masks Let's take off mm -hmm. these um, facades, you know these fake things and let's see one more um, layer of reality of humanity and I think that's cool so I don't mind seeing people naked for that reason. Like, I think it's I think it's fun. I think it's dangerous to tell other people what they want and don't want. Um, but if you don't want that, that's cool. And another thing happens when we're honest about saying I don't want that, and that is that you can actually have the potential to change if you want to. <laughs> but you can't change as long as you think you're doing it for everyone else um, and you're not being honest about the real motive. Right. Uh! This is not comfortable sitting on this bed. I know. We're just, just sit like this. Okay, it's Tuesday night. Time to go drink and smoke. Thanks for listening. I hope that was helpful. Uh, leave comments below. I guess. I don't know what you're going to say, but. Leave Bible verses below. <laughs> JK. JK.